Good morning and welcome to Athena's Bible Study. I do apologize, I was not here yesterday, but after therapy I went to the store and my trip to town took half the day and the other half of the day we were busy uh, organizing Christmas lights for our front yard. So my whole day was kind of busy until I sat down on the couch and fell asleep and then went to bed later on. So, I do apologize that I was not here yesterday. Today, we're going to talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit for Pentecost Sunday and why the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit enables us to live for Christ and make the gospel known to the world. This lesson invites us to consider two practical purposes for which the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost following the ascension of Jesus to be a helper to believers in Christ and to conceive the world to believe or convince the world to believe in Jesus as the Messiah Savior whom God sent to save sinners. The Holy Spirit is a witness of Christ to the world and so also are believers in Christ. Alright, and we're going to read from the books of John, Acts, and Romans today. Alright, John 14, verses 15 through 18, and then we're going to go over to Acts 2, 1 through 4. And that's how we're going to start. And guess what I found? I found my reading glasses. They were down inside this couch. All right. John 14. 15 through 18. All right. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it, is, it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. All right. I'm hoping it finishes that thought there. All right, let's go to Acts 2, 1 through 4. Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. All right. Jesus identified love for him and obedience to him as conditions for receiving the promised comforter, the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Holy Spirit was implicate in the fact that Jesus said he would pray the Father to send the Spirit, and the Father would send him. Acts 2, 1-4 through 4 tells the beginning of the fulfillment of the promise that the Holy Spirit would be given to believers in Christ. The gift of the Spirit had been foretold as a baptism in the Spirit. However, when the gift of the Holy Spirit was received on the day of Pentecost, 
those who received the Spirit were filled with the Holy Ghost and the initial evidence through the believers that they had received the gift of the Spirit was that they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit had gave them utterance. The early church made distinction between receiving the indwelling of the Holy Spirit by regeneration or the new birth and receiving the gift of baptism in fullness of the Holy Spirit subsequent to regeneration. The promised gift of the Holy Spirit, which began to be given to believers in Christ on the day of Pentecost almost two millennia ago, is still being given to believers in Christ today. Every believer in Christ can and should be filled with the Holy Spirit to be spiritually equipped and empowered for Christian living and ministry. All right, the Spirit helps believers. We're going to go to John 14, and we're going to read 26, verse 26, and then we're going to jump over to 16 and read verses 12 through 14, and then we're going to go to Romans 8 and read verses 26 and 27. So John 14. All right. I'm going to read verse 26. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. All right. And then let's go to verse 16 and read... Or chapter 16 and read verses 12 through 14. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, when, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. All right. Where are we going now? Romans 8, 26 and 27. Romans 8, 26 and 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself in intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. All right. It says, The name Comforter for the Holy Spirit means helper. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will help believers in him by teaching and reminding them of all things whatsoever. Jesus himself said, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit also helps believers by providing them the guidance and revelation. The Spirit guides Christians in all truth, in faith and practice in relation to Christ. The Holy Spirit reveals truth made known in Holy Scripture by Christ. Our weaknesses frequently cause us to pray for God's help. However, we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Therefore, the Holy Spirit makes intercession to God for us according to God's will. This is extremely important. For the fulfilling of God's will for our individual lives and for the corporate life of the church, 
The Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth if our sincere desire is to be guided by Christ and the world in our faith and practices. Or, if our sincere desire is to be guided by Christ and the Word in our faith and practice, the Holy Spirit helps us as Jesus would. All right, let's go to John 15. And we're going to read 26 and 27. I don't know why it wrote it that way, but 26 and 27. And then we'll go to 16 and read 7 through 11. John 15, verses 26 and 27. When the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth goes out from the Father. He will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. And then we'll go to 16 and read 7 through 11. But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes... He will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin. Because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness. Because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment because of the prince of the world now stands condemned. All right. Jesus assured the disciples it was in their best interest for him to depart from them. So the Comforter of, would come and begin his ministry to them, through them, in the relation to the world. The role of the Holy Spirit in relation to the unbelieving world is to convince the world regarding who Jesus is and the effectiveness of his redemptive work. The Holy Spirit works to make the unsaved conscious of their sins and their need of Christ to the Savior. The Holy Spirit works to convince unbelievers to trust in Jesus Christ for their salvation. Finally, because Jesus' death was a judgment against Satan, the Holy Spirit convinces the unsaved that by trusting in Christ they can be saved from sin and death. The gospel is the power of God into salvation to everyone that believeth. The success of the gospel in turning sinners to Christ for salvation must be attributed to convincing work of the Holy Spirit confirming the truthfulness of the gospel. All right, let's read Life-Related Learning, The Anointing of the Holy Spirit. Christmas Evans, living 1766 through 1838, was described by one writer as one of the most eloquent and powerful preachers in, the, in Wales from the late 18th to early 19th centuries. During one period of time, he served five churches at the same time. He would often walk 20 miles on Sunday and preach at each church where large crowds gathered to hear him. In his diary, Evans wrote on one occasion when he was riding a horse on his way to a preaching appointment when he felt convicted by God of what he called a cold heart. He tells how the Holy Spirit revived and strengthened him at that time. I tethered my horse and went to the squelchered spot, sequestered spot where I walked to and fro in agony as I reviewed my life. 
I waited for three hours before God, broken with sorrow, until there broke over me a sweat sense of my forgiving heart, love. Broke over me a sweet sense of his forgiving love. I received from God a new baptism with the Holy Ghost. As the sun was west westering, I went back to the road, found my horse, mounted it, and went to my appointment. On the following day, I preached with such new power to a vast concourse of people gathered on a hillside that a revival broke out that day and spread through all of Wales. In church, we sometimes sing the beautiful chorus, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Often the place my hand, often I place my hand over my heart and sing the words as a prayer as I welcome the Holy Spirit into my earthly being. During these three or four during the three or four more years that jesus ministered on earth peter tells that god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and the power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him in acts 10:38 jesus our lord ministered by the power of the holy spirit and he promised us his disciples Ye shall receive power after all, or after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me unto the uttermost part of the earth. Only the anointing of the Holy Spirit can make the church sufficient to proclaim the gospel of the whole world. Written by Mrs. Sylvia H. Bell. All right, we're not going to do the daily Bible readings anymore. I will give them to you. You can go through there and read them yourselves. First one is 1 Samuel 16, 10 through 13. 1 Samuel 16, 10 through 13. Ezekiel 3, 10 through 14. Ezekiel 3, 10 through 14. John 3, 1 through 8. John 3, 1 through 8. John 16, 5 through 15. John 16, 5 through 15. Romans 8, 12 through 17. Romans 8, 12 through 17. And finally, Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. Alright, we have one more lesson from 2 Corinthians. We're going to read, tomorrow we're going to read 2 Corinthians 11 and 12. And that will finish out this book, and I will see if I can find one that has some, uh, Christmas lessons in it. So, that is all I have for you guys today. I do appreciate you guys being with me. Um... My husband tells me that I'm wasting my time. I hope I'm not. I hope I am at least getting the word out to a few people. So, until tomorrow, I hope everybody has a wonderfully blessed day. And I will see you guys later. Bye.